So let us introduce ourselves first. Um, I'll go first since I'm already talking. Um, I'm Haley with Nourish the Root Cause. I'm based out of Southeast Michigan in the Detroit, uh, Metro Detroit area. I work with clients both locally and virtually to help them discover the nutrition that best supports their body and lifestyle. I have been a functional nutritional therapy practitioner since February 2020 and a licensed restart instructor since March 2020. I specialize in liver, gallbladder health and detoxification. And I'm on a mission to help individuals keep their gallbladders and educate those who don't have them. So I'm excited to be here. Mary, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Mary. I currently live in St. Louis, Missouri. It's raining today and pretty sad, but that's okay. The sun's coming and 90 degree weather is too. So I'm happy about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so we live here with our four kids, our two dogs, our two chickens. Um, and a little bit about myself, I graduated from the Nutritional Therapy Association in 2019. I um, had a great time learning all that I did. And um, before that, I used to be a health education teacher for the Yonkers Public School District. Um, so I've always loved all things health related and love teaching and love teaching people new ideas and facts and information that can help them to live a healthier and uh, disease freer life. Um, mm -hmm. Right now I'm working mainly with individuals who struggle with fatigue to increase their energy and to get back to the back to doing the things that they love to do. Um, fatigue is plaguing a lot of people all over the world today. So I know it's something that I have struggled with and still do occasionally, but through nutrition and all these things, I've learned a lot about my body and how to support that. And I would love to help others do the same. So that's it. Nice, nice, Mary. Well, um, let's let's tell them why we decided to do food swaps and why that's important. Um, for me, a lot of my clients come to me and don't realize that some of the foods that they have in their pantry doesn't benefit their health. So I think it's it's important to have an educational piece on what foods to look for, what foods to be aware of, and what foods to avoid. Um, so that's why I particularly feel like it's important um, to understand um, misguided information that is given to us. Yeah, definitely. And all that, um, I feel the same way. Also, just growing up or just shopping for a large family that we have here, it's a little bit overwhelming to be in a supermarket and reading every single label and trying to figure out what's good, what's bad what's gonna help. Um, there's a lot of myths surrounding a lot of the ingredients that are in our food, things that have been passed down culturally, things that have our parents have learned that also have been passed down to us. myths surrounding a lot of the ingredients that are in our food, things that have been passed down culturally, 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 Okay. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. That's fine. A um, <laughs> little glitch in the matrix. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, so uh -huh. like this is something that we, it's such a simple topic, but it's not that simple because there's so many layers to the food industry and the supermarkets. And even though it seems like it should be an easy thing, it's something that you kind of have to learn. And we're going to be here to guide you and Kind of start off simple i hope and not overwhelmed but also just teach the very straight matter of fact things you can look for when you're in the supermarket with your family and i hope that this will be good oh you're mute you're muted okay <laughs> if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll we'll get to those um we i'd like to start off before we um jump into it kind of talk about good better and best so not everyone's budget's the same so doing the best that you can with what you have is always a good way to approach this if you want to make changes but your budget doesn't allow to do a complete overhaul that's okay doing doing small changes add up over time so do what's in what's best for you and your family and your budget and work it's a process, just to work your way up to removing one item a week, one item a month, whatever it may be. Swap one out for, um, swap a, a bad oil for a good oil. And then maybe next month you can incorporate a new swap. 
Yeah, I mean, when I started teaching health education and during my education process, they barely touched upon what is organic, what does that mean and how it affects your body. So this is something I've learned slowly over the last, I would say 15 years. So it's something that, you, you know, you wanna make changes. A lot of people wanna just go in quickly in cold turkey and, you know, you wanna think about your budget. And I, I was telling Haley before we, have a specific part of our budget for food. We use an app called You Need a Budget or YNAB. And these are just some tools that families can use or not even families, but single people, anyone can use it to help figure out how much they can spend towards good food and you know what your budget is like. Because we're investing in our future. We're investing in our children's health. We're investing in ourselves. So it's really important to make that a priority in your budgets, so a lot of it is mind shift and mm -hmm. taking care of yourself. You're all worth it. Absolutely. And when we look at you kind of touched on like for our health and, and yes, um, some foods that um, are, are organic and pasture raised and, and such can be more expensive. However, when you look at the grand scheme of things, our healthcare is very expensive. So our health is worth all the investment. And um, particularly for me, it's it's taken me three years to transition to where I'm at um, with the foods that I buy. And it, it is a learning. It's something that you have to learn. And um, and like Mary said, budget for. So. All right, it's Mary. Oh, no. um, you want to get started on the misguided yeah. labeling and marketing buzzwords? Yes, ma'am. So let's pull up the. So this is a question we started this whole thing with. Um, do you ever feel overwhelmed while shopping for healthy options? Even I do. You? Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> do. Um, and these are the three major things we're gonna go over. So ingredients to look for, misleading branding, and food swaps that you can make. So just to start off, this is what a typical food label looks like. This is one of my favorite topics I used to teach in middle school. And now through adulthood, because it's something that we all need to learn. Mm -hmm. um, just some simple things to look for in on the label is the serving size, because sometimes they can be a little bit tricky with the serving size, how much of a portion is represented. So everything that's here in the ingredients and the macronutrients, so the fat, cholesterol, that's how much you get per serving. So for here, it's two thirds of a cup. Uh, calories. I personally don't really count calories. Some people do, um, but with the NTA and I think with Haley's philosophy as well, we're not focused on calorie counting because everyone has a different need. Unless you're working with a specific doctor over a specific disease and, you know, that's something that you're working with your doctor, but that's fine. But overall, like, especially for kids and, you know, if you're just trying to have energy, you want to focus on quality and your plate. Yep, I was going to so, say quality over yeah. calories. Exactly. So the next thing you want to look at is the fat content. Again, it's not about how much, it's about how good it is, the quality. So we'll get into that when we get into swapping for fats. Also cholesterol, this was a big buzzword for many years. Me growing up, our family is historically high in cholesterol. This was something we always wanted to keep low, but dietary cholesterol from food has very little impact on your actual cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. And I'll repeat that again, because I feel like that's one of those things that are like, pff, like people are like, but wait, you know, like we're eating all this cholesterol, we're gonna have heart disease. So again, cholesterol that comes from your food has very little impact on your blood cholesterol serum levels. Um, so you like don't to, wanna, huh? No, I'd like to note to that, 75% of the cholesterol in our body is made by the liver, so. Yep, and yep, yep. Haley loves liver. <laughs> that liver. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and if you, like, when you have high cholesterol and other markers for inflammation in your blood, that's usually from high sugar and high refined foods, and we'll get into that too. Sodium, um, it's always been considered evil because people associate high sodium with high blood pressure, which is somewhat true. If you're just having sodium, um, what is it? Sodium chloride just that alone 
and too much of it, especially with foods that are high in like MSG, high sodium, those artificial things, yes, that will spike up your blood pressure, but and you want to get sodium from good quality stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, if you get, if you're, the one, the sodium to be concerned about is sodium from processed foods. So, and it's the quality, again, of the salt, you, you know, and we'll talk about salt options later. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm like looking at my, I brought, I went shopping in my kitchen. So I'm trying to see if I put the salt in my bag. I might run out and get it in a minute. I have to get my salt too, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so sodium is important to have. We need it for normal bodily function. So it is important to have sodium in your diet. But again, it goes back to quality. Uh, carbohydrates, everyone's carbohydrate tolerance is very bio-individual. And also, it's another word, carbohydrates can be used for vegetables and bread and pasta. So we wanna make sure we understand what carbohydrates are. It's a vast amount of foods, including vegetables. So that's something to look at. Added sugar is important. Um, it's one of the most important things to look at because that's where you're gonna get your inflammation from. So per serving, there's 12 grams and 10 grams of added sugar. So that means for every two thirds of a cup, <laughs> there's 12 grams of sugar so like sometimes it, they might be sneaky i'll say two tablespoons 10 grams of sugar and usually people might use like 10 tablespoons so yeah. you have to do the math so um, my, my rule is sorry to interrupt you but my rule of thumb is if it has includes added sugar yeah we don't we don't bring it home yeah. so <laughs> that's a good rule that's a really good rule um after extra sugar the nutrient content it's it's good to understand and know that um but you're going to get all these good nutrients from good whole foods, usually ones that don't even have a food label because they come fresh from the farm. Um, the next thing is ingredients. This is the first thing you should be reading before you even look at serving size and everything else. The first thing you should be looking at are the ingredients. Our main rule is anything you want to have your ingredients list to be at least six and under or under six so five and under um, um, amounts of things in your ingredients list. So this example here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 things. Um, also, if you can't recognize the word or you can't pronounce it, you probably don't want to put it in your body because your body won't recognize it either. Um, what else? Be cautious of vague ingredients like natural flavors or spices. Sometimes those can still be artificial and they could cause allergic reactions, especially food colorings. And this is a whole nother topic, but food coloring yeah. and hyperactivity disorders and cancers, these are all related and interconnected. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, so we'll get, yeah, I have so much to say. No, me too. Me too. Did you want to add anything to this slide? No, I think that's great. I think you went over it um, beautifully. Thank you. Next. All right. So next we're going to talk about marketing buzzwords. This is, is uh, for lack of a better term, it's kind of a scam in a way because it can, it can be misleading. Um, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and um, heart healthy cereals, right? We look at, it's, it says it's good for your heart. It can lower cholesterol. If there is a, a tagline that says it can help you achieve something, it's probably not something you want to um partake in, right? <laughs> healthy, gluten-free is a big one right now. And we, when this comes back to what Mary was talking about, about reading labels is it could, it, yes, it may be gluten-free. However, let's look at the ingredients. Does, is it good oils? What type of, um, is it, you know, what type of oats? Are they organic? What have you? So um, all natural, Mary kind of um, spoke on to that one already, baked fresh, local, low fat, and keto is another big one right now. And again, it all goes back to looking at those ingredients. What they're hoping that we do is we say, oh, it's heart healthy. Oh, it's keto. Oh, we're just going to grab it because that's what we're achieving. That's what we're trying to achieve, right? We're trying to be on a ketogenic diet. We're trying to support heart health. So they're hoping that we don't turn it around and look at the ingredients. Mm -hmm. They just want us to grab it and go, right? Yes. So <laughs> always turn the box around. Always pick up the item that you're going to you're going to, um, you want to purchase and look and see what's actually in that product. So do you have anything yeah. to add to that one? Yeah, I was just thinking of two things. So once 
I went to Costco and of course I bought everything I needed except one thing, which was a mayonnaise. And then my next stop was Target. So I'm like, oh, maybe Target has the brand I'm looking for. And they did, but it was like twice as expensive for like half the size. And then I was looking what else they had. And it was, this was a mayonnaise product. And then they had a bunch of Hellman's and they're like with new pretty labels, nice and green, looks very organic. And then a lot of them shows like a little picture of an olive and it says made with olive oil. I was like, oh, okay, let me see what's in here. So I turn it around. And then of course the first ingredient is canola oil. And then like maybe five or six ingredients down olive oil. Yeah. So actually back to this real quick on your ingredients list, it's in order. It's yep. in listed by descending weight. So the first ingredient is always what is there, what's the most of, and then every ingredient after that, there's less and less and less. So if you have something that says made with olive oil, but olive oil is like the fifth, sixth or seventh ingredient, it's a very little amount. Mm -hmm. So that's something you really, it's really tricky. They almost got me, but I turned <laughs> it around. <laughs> yeah. And then the second thing, um, you know, at different gatherings, um, you know, well-meaning friends, families, loved ones, you know, we, a lot of people know we're like, we mostly eat gluten-free and I, and I am always tell the kids, you know, we eat like artificial flavor-free, low sugar. So a lot of people will buy us like gluten-free items that says like gluten-free on there because they think, oh, this will be, this is what they, they eat. And I feel this is like a really sensitive topic because I know everyone has a lot of well-meaning intentions behind it, but we do limit like the amount of sugars we have and a lot of like fruit snacks and all those things that they market it as gluten-free on the front to really get those, you know, people that are buying, um, look, turn it around, look at how many added sugars are in there. It is pure mm -hmm. sugar, pure, not like a bunch of natural flavors, a lot of times artificial flavors and colors. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, even in other countries, when they're manufactured in other countries, they don't even have half the things that America allows okay. here. That's a whole nother topic, but yeah. so turn it around, just look at yeah. the, turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> always, there's a song, turn it around. Let's just always want to play in your head when you're walking through the supermarket. Now I do want to point, take a point to what you said, you know, you know, I have a very supportive family as well. And they know kind of how I eat and, and the ingredients that I choose to put in my body and mm -hmm. my brother, God bless him for I think Thanksgiving last year. He was so proud of himself for purchasing butter made with avocado oil. And I'm like, wait a second. I don't think I don't, I really just, that doesn't sound right to me. So it was in like the little margarine container. It said mm -hmm. maple olive oil and I turned it around and I said, oh, you know, it looks like this went bad. Oh <laughs> and, no. Yeah. I threw it away and he knew why, because it was canola oil. Oh, <laughs> and they marketed it. Yeah, it marketed it. Now he understood, and, and um, I I appreciate his efforts. So again, always turn it around, and, and let's keep on looking. And if it has artificial artificial um, colorings, that's a no for me. That's an absolute no. And again, that's another topic for a different time. So yes, also, and one thing to add to the labels, it should also be five grams or less of sugar per serving. But depending on how big the serving size, that's another factor. So like five or less ingredients, five or less grams of sugar. These are just some things in your mind you want to just look at when you're looking at all the labels. So should we get to food swaps? Yeah, let's let's move forward with this. All right. So um, were you going to talk about the oil or do you want me to? <laughs> we oh, had a plan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I think. All right, let me talk about it because I have all the fats here in front of yeah. me. So. Yeah. Um, food swaps. One thing for, for me, the biggest thing I look for is oil. And we want to stay away from canola, soybean, um, corn, vegetable. If it says it's um, like a blend, you always want to make sure it's not blended with one of these oils. These oils are bleached, deodorized. They're, they go through this chemical process. and um, that in itself impacts our body, right? These cause inflammation. So when you have a product that has these fats in them, it's just, it's, you're at a higher risk for inflammation or, and it does cause inflammation. Um, I notice if we have something that has a bad oil in it, I ache, right? Like since I eat very clean and I'm used to eating um, real fats, I can, I can tell if something has a bad fat in it. Um, those um, 
these fats are usually in bottles that are clear and they don't, they have a long shelf life, right? But they're already rancid. That's what they don't tell you. These fats are already bad and cause harm when you intake them. So we want to look for the swap, which is extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. Um, and again, you can choose to swap it out for one or many as I do. Um, I'm going to show you a few of them. Now this, oh, this I is that one too. <laughs> coconut oil from Costco. Uh -huh. and it's virgin see twinsies here and when you're looking at um coconut oil you want to look for cold press right we don't want our oils heated up prior to them getting to us okay um that's a picture i took of my olive oil to add to this slide so um uh, extra virgin olive oil. Um, I get this one from Thrive Market because I can't always find the olive oil that I want. So I do reach out to other um, ways of getting it. Um, all right. So, and then I have ghee. I think, I think Mary had ghee too. No? Yep. I did. Yep. So as you can see, it's my used one. <laughs> but ghee is another good one to have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Again, I purchase all organic, but geese, it, any kind of ghee is going to be better than um, those bad oils. Excuse me. And then we'll go. Oh, so the, um, one last one is um, pure tallow, mm -hmm. which is made out of beef fat. Oh, and I have pork lard as well, who I get from a farmer. So, and this is pasture raised. Which um, is awesome. Yeah, right. So you can use, um, I don't, we weren't going to talk about this, but I do want to put in a little caveat that um, like beef tallow and pork, the lard are the ones that you really want to use at higher heat because they're stable enough to be able to handle that and they don't break down and go rancid as quickly as the other ones. Olive oil should never be done at high heat. I tell my clients to steam your vegetables or cook your vegetables however you prefer and drizzle olive oil over after it because we need we need fat to be added to our vegetables because without it it does we don't absorb those um, fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K um, when we intake them. So make sure that you're putting fats on your vegetables. So put drizzle a little bit of olive oil over it when it's done. I put it over eggs. You know, I'm always incorporating fat where I can. Mm -hmm. So and the lard is really good for people that are bakers instead of using the what's it called? The um Crisco, like the the, Crisco. I don't yeah, know. I also brought this one. So Bakers can also use this. This is palm fruit oil, which okay. is a good option. It's not like the best, but I think lard is the best option for those that are baking. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like, again, like good, better, best. This is another really good yeah. option for baking too. Just, and when you are purchasing um, olive oil, make sure it's per, it's um, in a dark bottle. Yes. In and this dark. one, this is the one I get from Costco. It's cold pressed organic really good price for this big size. So you're going to really get your money's worth there. Costco. Yeah. Costco. <laughs> I love Costco. Costco is it, it. There is, they have a lot of great quality products, but they have the marketing words too. So you need to make sure yes. to trust them over as well. Very careful. So, yeah. yeah. All right. You want to go into the next one? Yep. This is a little quick no. blurb. The longer this little thing you tell yourself, the longer the shelf life, the shorter your health life. <laughs> I love that. I love that saying. So that's our if it's clear, you know, that it has a long shelf life. So rancid. Yep. No rancid. yep. So this is another one. Haley just went over uh, yep. margarine. And butter. Yes. <laughs> butter is my friends. And I, again, buy this from a local farmer that, it, and it's grass fed butter. But for me, that's the best option. And you can get grass fed butter. So at Aldi. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I mean, I'm sure other places, but Mar we want to tell them why margarine is, you want to look out for that? Would you like to take that or? Sure. Well, margarine is mostly made from something called hydrogenated oil. So it's pretty much fat broken down into a form to make it solid at room temperature, but it will just wreak havoc on your body. It will cause inflammation. And then we spoke a little bit about it before, but inflammation can lead to many diseases that we know today that are, you know, putting a lot of money on our healthcare system, for example, like 
type two diabetes, cancers, Alzheimer's, these are all diseases that stem from inflammation. Pretty much every disease stems from a form of inflammation in our body. So margarine, just think of it as leading towards that inflammation and you wanna swap it for a much better, cleaner option. Yeah. Refined baking flours. Um, again, these are some things you really gotta play around with and learn and there's a ton of recipes. I have some on my website, Haley, I think, I'm not sure if you are starting recipes on yours, but we can also share in the in the chat or on Facebook, um, some different websites that have really good gluten-free, better options for baking. I have for baking, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mary, but while you're oh, looking for that, yeah. I have um, my friend from Aloha Healthy Eats, She's a trained baker or whatever that's considered. And she has some wonderful recipes on her website um, and a lot of baking options, because I think that's really hard to transition for some people is, is baking with flour into um, other flour, such as almond, cassava, what have you. So what's her website, Aloha? Aloha Healthy Eats. So I'll put it in the chat so uh, you can people can check her out. So here's like an example of coconut flour. Um, I also substitute chia seeds sometimes in recipes. Um, this creates like a gelatinous type of mixture, like kind of what egg does. This also is really great. I also use like cocoa powders, just pure cocoa as, you know, a lot of people use this already, but even when making like hot chocolate, yeah, that's a whole nother <laughs> topic. Yeah, that's a great option. That's a great option. I like yeah. that. Um, I use cassava flour and yeah. topi tapioca flour. Mm -hmm. um, I I have I used to use almond flour, but I can't because of sensitivities now. Yeah, and that's uh, just, so, yeah. Some people, I mean, a lot of nuts too can make you. So you gotta like mix it up and switch yeah. it around. No, yeah, so it's but it's worth looking into. It's worth investigating. Um, and swapping out, so. All right, we wanna to move to cereal or food swaps for cereals and granola. Um, a lot of times cereals and granola both have lots of added sugar to them. Again, we're turning the package around to look to see what the first ingredient is or the first five at least, right? Mm -hmm. But there's other options out there. So I have a teenager who's 18 now. So I technically he's an adult, but still, he's still my baby. <laughs> um, and taking cereal away from him was, was a transition, but it happened over time. Like he now knows that we just don't have it in the house and we have other options. He does like oatmeal. So a good swap for this is oats, whole food granola. I used to make it with almond flour. Um, again, because of allergies, I no longer do that, but there's, there's great recipes out there to make your own um, granola and then coconut flakes as well. But my oats that I use, I get it from Thrive Market it is um, there's sprouted steel cut oats. And um, I'd like to touch on sprouted for a second because you can get sprouted flowers as well. And the reason why sprouted is important, at least for me and my family, is that it releases, um, let me say, toxins. yeah, the, there's a little toxin in, um, in the, the, the outer shell. I think I can't think what it's called. The lectin. Yeah. So there's lectin. So it releases that, um, chemical or what have you that can impact the body. So now you don't have to get sprouted, but again, that's, that's the best option for yeah. me and my family, but there's better options of just choosing, um, oats. I like steel cut oats, but you can do with just, um, rolled oats as well. Um, what, what do you use in replace of cereal or granola, if anything? Yeah, we, um, uh, we used to be big cereal people. And then we tried to do the gluten-free organic one, but that was like $9 a bag and that went <laughs> quickly. So honestly, we just buy the organic, um, oats from Costco. We had a big, big box of it and the kids, we've taught them how to make it every morning. We cut up like apples, throw that in there. Um, and then also actually for the, for my breakfast, I do make like a hot warm cereal. I add this with uh, hemp seed. I don't, I left it in the kitchen, but this plus hemp seed plus like warm oat milk, mm -hmm. you let it sit for 10 minutes, put a little ghee butter on there, cut some apples. And it's like the best like filling breakfast. Cause another thing too, these cereals, 
if you think of a fire, if you ever started a fire, when you have like a cereal like this, it's just kindling. Like when you start a fire, you want to get a quick fire, right? But mm -hmm. when you add more things in there that are more hardy, have more fiber, you add some good fats, that will let your fire burn longer. And that's what we're also trying to do. So not to get deep into that, but it's important again, into quality and the right nutrients to help your, to give your body the energy that it needs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I use hemp hearts as well and chia seeds Yeah, um, and do like an overnight thing. Okay. So if you, if you are somebody who needs to take something to eat at work, I don't mm -hmm. ever advise you eating on the run. We should always be seated when we're eating. Mm -hmm. Um, and not in the car. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I just throw it in a mason jar with the lid and it's good to go for when you get to work. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And also like, if you have anyone in your family that's constipated, this will help <laughs> yeah, get things moving. Yes. Yes. For so many different things. Yes. Yeah. All right. So refined sugar. So this is another one major inflammatory uh, contributor, pure sugar. And mm -hmm. these are some really good options for swapping. So you have honey, maple syrup, dates, even coconut sugar is another really good option. These all contain sugar, yes, but they also contain a lot of important nutrients and vitamins and minerals that just naturally are in there. Um, I have some, so this is, I think I got this from Aldi's. Costco has a nice, good, big one for a good price. It's pure maple syrup. So a little goes a long way. So like if we have company over, we're like measuring this for them because some people like people, you know, Aunt Jemima's, all those log cabin. I mean, I grew up eating that for the most part. And it that if you look at the back, that corn syrup, the, the pure sugars, the artificial colors and flavors, they're trying to be like this, like they're the bootleg version. This is the real stuff. And this just, for example, one... There's 12 servings in here. Two tablespoons consider a serving. You really only need like one tablespoon, if that much, if you make pancakes, because it's so rich, it's super sweet, but it's all natural. And this is a much better option than all the other fake cancer causing, inflammatory causing junk that's out there. Like, please don't get that stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're begging yeah. you. It, it might be a little bit more than the Aunt Jemima that she's mentioning, but it's, it actually lasts a little bit longer because you're not yeah. using as much of it. Yes. And yeah, we could go into that, but we'll- And teach your kids, how long, yeah. I mean, I feel like teach your family to just use, to measure it with a, like a measuring spoon and just use a little bit. A little will go a very long way and it will last a lot longer than you think. I mean, that's a good point for all the things that we've been talking about, right? Like, yeah. you know, I showed you all the, the fat options. We don't need a lot. We only need a minimal amount because we're, we eat to- to uh, nourish our body so they can perform as needed, right? So we don't need to do it over abundance. That, that causes harm in itself, but um, absolutely. I, I like, we use maple syrup here. Um, I've used dates in the past to um, make cookies and or add to oatmeal. And we use coconut sugar as well. Oh, and a little trick, cinnamon. If you add cinnamon to stuff, it tricks your tongue into thinking things are actually sweeter than they are. So adding cinnamon is a really good. Nice tip. tip. Nice tip. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So another food swap um, is fake syrups is kind of Mary had already mentioned and jellies with added sugar. Yeah. Now they do sell jelly with like no added sugar. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I've I don't know how much I believe that, but uh, <laughs> this fruit has a lot of sugar in it as it is. And so you think about if you're taking a pound of strawberries and you're mashing them down to make jelly or jam, that's a lot of, that's a lot of sugar, right? Um, but we can switch it again for maple syrup, honey, and date syrup. These are all natural that that's, they don't have anything added to them generally, right? Um, I'm thinking like we sometimes eat toast. And um, we'll put honey on it instead of jelly. So mm -hmm. you could put honey and a little bit of ghee on there. Yep. Yeah. You know what? Good point on the ghee on using it instead of butter. Cause some people don't think about that. And we do that. I put the ghee on before I toast it in my, because um, I like the taste of it better, but absolutely. You can use ghee and coconut oil. You can use coconut oil too. If it's, if you get it room temp. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, MSG, our, so artificial color flavor mixes, anything with MSG in there. There's a lot of different names for it now. Yeast extracts, there's like, I think a list of over like 40 names that they use now. So it's a lot of, it's really tricky marketing. So just read the label again. And if you don't recognize something, it probably won't be recognized by your body. Um, and the swap is spices and herbs. And I wanted to share something. Um, so growing up, I grew up, you know, my grandmother, my mom, they're from Puerto Rico. And I love, I love any ethnic food, whether it's like Korean, um, Ethiopian, Puerto Rican, whatever. Um, and I always love food that tastes like it's made by a grandma, not something that looks like it came from a box with like, you open up a little package of flavor and you throw it in there, but actual real flavors that come from spices and herbs. And I, like, I unfortunately did not learn from my grandmother how to cook. So I had to learn on my own. And at first I used to use something called Sazon, which is an artificial flavor and coloring for Spanish food. It tastes great, but I realized I started to get a lot of uh, migraine headaches from things that contain MSG. So, and I just didn't like the idea that it was this artificial flavor, it just felt fake. So I found, uh, actually no, my, my husband's grandmother gave me this book. I guess she was trying to tell me something like, here, you married my grandson, learn how to cook for him. <laughs> but um, I mean, this book is pretty much like a grandmother in a book. It's like the Bible for Puerto Rican food. And you can find books like this probably for every single different culture, whatever culture you're from, whether it's Asian, Indian, whatever, look for the books or look for the elderly people in your family that know those recipes still and learn them because there's so many beneficial things to them, not only because they taste better, but because there's also a lot of spices and herbs that are actually really good for your body. And it's just really good things to pass down. It tastes great. And it's nothing really better than having like natural, naturally made food from naturally made food. Not yeah, made. absolutely. And it goes back to, we should eat like our great grandparents. Right. And I, and I do like to mention, I like that you have things tagged. I see that. Oh yeah. I have it all. My favorite that. recipes are all. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So she does use the book. Yes. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a good point of um, cooking what your ancestors or, or what, um, I guess what your ancestors used to eat. So yeah, keep the culture alive. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's kind of, we, we've gave you like general things. So let's think about like how we swap things in our, in our meals, right? So instead of flour, flour tortillas, use a lettuce wrap, right? Um, and uh, I also use, not everyone um, may like this, but I use egg wraps and I make them myself. It's just, and not everyone takes or uses dairy. I get that, but I, I can tolerate dairy. So I use a little bit of cream cheese with eggs and I blend it together and I, I fry them up in um, a pan, like a really thin layer of it. And they, they take less than 30 seconds or like, yeah, 30 seconds to make. And then I flop them on a, on a cutting board and I just keep on making a whole bunch of them and I let them cool a little bit. And that's what we use for wraps some days. That sounds so good. I'm hungry. <laughs> so I use them to make burritos instead nice. of um, the lettuce wrap. So, and then there's frozen potato products. Of course you can roast or bake them. Um, you know, spaghetti, use spaghetti squash, um, coffee creamer. This is a big one. I know so many coffee drinkers and they're like, you know what? I'm not ready to let go of my creamer. It's like, yeah. that's my thing. That's my one thing. I'm like, you know what? Read the, ingredients. <laughs> yeah, read the ingredients. It's not even cream. It is hydrogenated oils, right? And like, we don't want to be putting that in our body. How many cups of coffee are you having with this creamer in it? So coffee creamer is, is, is a big point with my clients. And I'm like, just get a little bit of heavy whipping cream, add some honey, add some maple syrup. Now I'm going to tell them to add some cinnamon because it'll taste a little sweeter. Right. <laughs> yes. I like that. Yes. And, you know, and it helps with blood sugar regulation too. Yep. Cause you're getting that fat in there. So, um, yeah. So you don't have to, to buy the coffee creamer at the store. You can actually make it yourself. You could probably use a little bit of um, vanilla extract if you like. Like I'm not big on extracts, but it's better than the creamer itself, right? And yeah. then mayo, uh, Mary had talked about, you can buy avocado mayo. I know at, at Costco, because I do at Costco. Um, this is what we use. Yep, I use that one. I think I said, do you get it at Costco? Yeah. Yeah, but you see the very first ingredients is avocado oil. So that's what we're looking for. We're making sure that it doesn't have any other oils in it, right? 
or you can make your own mayo as well. But instead of using mayo um, that you buy that has avocado oil, you can just use smashed avocado. Yeah. Just smash it up and put it on your piece of bread. It's lovely. It's like, yeah. you know, the um, uh, avocado toast, but in a sandwich form. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, in my family, instead of crackers, we use veggies and nuts. Um, celery is a big thing in my house. My son likes hummus, so he eats his hummus with celery and carrots. And then we kind of talked about salt previously when we were talking about sodium. So table salt is a no-no. We don't want to buy Morton's unless we're going to put it on our driveway. And I don't even do that. <laughs> like, we don't, we don't use Morton salt in this house, they have it for years. but we're looking for pink or sea salt. And because these are natural forms that are going to benefit the body and they're not going to impact, um, the way that man-made salt is going to. So those are the salts that we want. And I didn't bring my salt in. I keep my salt on a bowl in a bowl because that's yeah, I, I just, I forgot mine. Um, something I did want to add for like the crackers and veggies when yeah. I was doing restart the first time, what got me through it was I would buy bags of sugar snap peas. I needed that like um, crunchy sweetness. Like, yeah. so that helped me get through that. But also if you are a, like a cracker or a chip lover, oh, yeah. this is a really good option that we found at Costco and the ingredients. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, it's organic even plantains, oil. organic coconut oil, and Himalayan sea salt. So, I mean, you really yeah. can't get better than this. I will say be careful because these go really fast and we do have to budget for this because it's not like, you know, chips are pretty cheap. This yeah. is a little bit more expensive, but if you teach your kids and your family, you know, how to, you know, portion, portion, portion control. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I like that. I'm gonna have to check those out. I want to <laughs> touch on this because I didn't bring up when we talked about flour. But if you like bread and um, it's hard to find um, bread that doesn't have bad oils in it or the flour that we don't want, but I go back to, back to sprouted. So I get Angelic Bakehouse sprouted bread and um, I get it at Costco, I get three loaves um, because, you know, Costco's go big or go home, right? <laughs> and um, th this is great bread. My son doesn't even complain about it. He's always my, my guide. Like, does he like it? Can, you know, will he eat it without too much complaint? So give sprouted bread. There's Dave's amazing bread or something like that. It's another good. Yeah. Sprouted. Yeah. But again, just like everything else, make sure you're turning sprouted bread around, making sure that it doesn't have canola or vegetable oil in it. Yes. And one more thing from Costco that we love to buy is salsa. Oh, yeah. Organic and the ingredients are really good. And yeah. Do you eat the plantain chips with it? Uh, okay. yeah, my husband, I mean, they eat the organic nacho chips also from okay. there, not the best option, but oh, it's still I eat it with the plantain chips or I eat it's the plantain chips, right? It's, it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. Right. So there's like the really bad and then like the really good. So, you know, we're not, we're not here all the time because yeah. we live in a world that's not perfect. And I don't expect us to be perfect. We expect yeah. progress, but not perfection. Right. And we try our best and that's what we do. Yeah, absolutely. So the next slide is, and I'm just gonna go over this quickly because time's yeah. the essence. And um, the EWG is an organization that tests things all over. They test water, they test makeup products. And one of their big things that they're known for is the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So when you're shopping for fruits and vegetables, it is really important to know which foods to avoid that are not organic and which foods that you can get non-organic. So this goes back, back to the budget. If you are on a budget and you know you probably can't afford all things organic, mm -hmm. you wanna look at the Dirty Dozen list. So on the gray side, the Dirty Dozen, you always wanna buy these organic because of their pesticide content in there. We didn't go deep into pesticides, but basically what they do, the way pesticides work is they pull nutrients from the plant so that all the pests will die around them the plants that they don't want to grow. And if it does that to the plants, imagine what it could do to your body. Your body is an ecosystem of bacteria, protozoa. And when you ingest these pesticides, the same thing also happens to your body. It will pull nutrients. It can lead to a bunch of other host of issues. I'll let you research that yourself. If you want, I have one of these, I can mail them to you. Why eat organic? This is from Moms Across America. 
I'm big on eating organic because it's one of those things, even though you don't visually see the mm -hmm. effects right away, these are one of those things that you want to invest in early on so you don't see those effects right away. Mm -hmm. um, so just look at this list. You can go to the ewg.com and all the lists are on there for free. Uh, the Clean 15 is, some, is all the stuff that you always buy organic. Um, they're both always buy. I'm sorry, no. These, you don't have to buy organic. I think I have to fix that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So the clean 15 is that you don't have to buy them organic. You can if you choose to, but you do want to buy them non-GMO. Mm -hmm. um, and then you want to mention the whole food yeah, challenge. So if you'd like to participate in the whole food challenge, um, just to challenge yourself, we're going to put a link to this um, PDF in the comments. And uh, <laughs> so if you've just go to the link. You have to give us some information and we'll send it to you. Um, and just let us know how it's going. Um, we're in the real food revolution um, Facebook group. So if you're in this group and you'd like to partake in it, just, just um, post about it and we'd love to chat. Yeah. So you put in your email and we'll send you this sheet. If you have anything else that you want information on, like the clean the um what do you call it the, the dirty dozen the clean 15 yeah if you want that list we can send that to you as well and you can keep that picture on your phone so when you are shopping you know what to be looking for yeah and you know what we can also give them the pantry swap but wait there's more <laughs> yeah, but wait, there's more <laughs> yeah so <laughs> we'll also send you the um, pdf of the pantry swap that we have Oh, and I see Sarah Jane, she's watching on online. She said, heavy cream and black walnut syrup with cinnamon for, I guess, coffee. Nice. Thanks, Sarah. That's a great suggestion. That sounds delicious. I'm hungry Thank again. And right? What is <laughs> the time? So, well, this has, I think has went beautifully. I think we went a little longer than what we anticipated. However, it was great information, right? Yes. Um, we would like to remind everybody that um, our restart classes are starting next week and registration deadline ends on Sunday at 11.59. Um, we'll let, would you, there's anything you would like to say about that? Yeah, um, we really wanna encourage people to join with a buddy. So if there's like a spouse, a partner, a friend or anyone that you would love to do restart with because it's really a supportive environment. Like we will create a supportive environment whether you're with a buddy or not. But we know just having that person with you that you know, especially a spouse or a partner, someone that you live with, it will help it even more. Like your success rate will be even better. So not to say that if you come alone, it won't be. Yeah. But, you know, just having that extra support besides for the support that we give, it will be monumental, especially if it's someone that you live with. You want everyone to kind of be on the same page and know why you're doing it, mm -hmm. why it works. Um, and we do give discounts if you do bring a buddy. So if you're curious yeah. about that, just reach out and we'll love to tell you more. You know, Mother's Day is coming up as well. So yes. how about yeah. like, I don't know, I think it's a great gift for a mother to do together, right? Um, yeah. So that's another consideration. Um, yeah, if I have a mother-daughter um, joining and then my other research group, I had a mother-daughter joining and it would, they make such a cute team because they really support one another. You know, the grandmas usually help take care of the little, the baby. So as they learn, they're changing generations to come health-wise. And when you make these changes, it affects everyone. So it's really important to bring everybody in. Your whole family. We have family discounts too. Yeah, bring everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to spend time with you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, again, I'm Haley with Nourish the Root Cause. There's my contact information. I would love to hear from you. Yep. And I'm Mary with IDeserveHealth.com. I do have some really yummy recipes that I just posted. Um, and check it out. It's on my blog on IDeserveHealth.com. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mary, for having this conversation. And um, I look forward to doing this again in the future. Me too. All right. Bye. Bye.